so good to have each and every one of you here with us to worship the Lord. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate all the ones watching live stream today, all the ones watching this week. Uh, when the, uh, uh, it's uploaded to the YouTube and to the uh, Facebook. Thank you for watching and being a part. We're going to open up in prayer and just welcome the presence of the Lord, ask Him to have His way and touch in each and every life, each and every heart, and do a mighty work. You help us for Heavenly Father. We truly thank you one more time for allowing us to be here. Lord, we thank you for a beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for giving us breath, giving us life, giving us opportunity to come into your house with thanksgiving and with praise. We thank you for that, Lord, for all your mercy and all your kindness. We welcome you here today. Ask you to have your way. Reach down to the midst of your people. Reach down and let your holiness, power, and anointing shine from the throne of grace in our lives. That we be your people. Lord, just show up and show out today, God. Move in a mighty way. Help us to put all the problems and all the situation behind us. And Lord, help us to lay them down at your feet. And Lord, just let you be God today.
lost loved ones that we saved before us today, also our children. God will bless our children, touch their lives, their homes, also our school system. God will bless them and touch them, minister in their needs in a mighty way. Let's also keep uh, uh, Sister Mary in prayer, Lord, we'll touch her, and also uh, Sister Brenda, Lord, we'll touch her. Also keep Debbie Talbot in prayer this morning. She's in the hospital, she needs special prayer. We're going to pray for her. Uh, also, let's still keep uh, uh, Brother Danny and Sister Carolyn in prayer, Lord, we'll keep touching. Also, uh, baby Adeline, she goes for uh, Dr. Pumper Wins, let's keep her in prayer. Also, uh, Danielle and Chris, Lord will bless, Lord will minister in a mighty way. Also, keep Sheila in prayer. She goes for a test again this week. Uh, Tuesday, I believe it is, let's keep her in prayer. Let's also keep uh, Brother Brandon in prayer this morning. We're going to anoint him and pray for him this morning. God will touch him and help him, bless him in a mighty way uh, and, and, and just touch beyond comparison. I wonder if you'd have a request to give him this morning.
this morning. Don't forget about that. Don't forget tonight's service at uh, 6 o'clock. Come out and worship the Lord. Tomorrow night is conference call at 7. Not Tuesday, but tomorrow night at 7 is conference call. Tuesday night is church here at 7 o'clock. It's our Thanksgiving service here Tuesday night. Don't forget about that at 7. Next Sunday, Sunday School 10, we'll worship at 11. Sunday night at 6, be inviting, we'll be telling people to uh, come on out. Also, the sign-up sheet for the Christmas banquet is in the vestibule. Uh, I'm going to have Sheila sent out on the prayer text today. Uh, needs to be have the names of the ones coming by tonight after service. So this morning or tonight, sign up. Uh, people's not signed up. They, uh, they This year, uh, with everything going on, we, uh, they just won't be able to come. If the name's not on the roster, uh, the, the sign-up sheet by this afternoon, uh, we, we won't have add-ons. So... Um, just normally we will let add-ons, but I need to call them this week and give the exact number and uh, to get a price and what we want. So it's going to be December 12th at 6.30. Uh, we have got several people signed up. So if you want to come to our Christmas banquet here at the church in the fellowship hall, December 12th at 6.30, please sign your name before uh, before to, uh, you leave church tonight so uh, I can get a count. Also, um, <clears throat> the, uh, we've got... December the 2nd, we've got uh, uh, shoe boxes going to be filled that night. Uh, if you've got a shoe box or you want to make a shoe box for Christmas child to send overseas, please bring that or have the items here by Wednesday night, December the 2nd, uh, to get those filled. Because then on that Saturday, December the 5th, at 10 o'clock, we're leaving in the church van to take delivery of those boxes to Charlotte. So we're going to make them December the 2nd. Uh, not December 3rd, not December 4th, December the 2nd. That night will be made unless you bring them pre-made. They got, the stuff's got to be here by the 2nd or the boxes. I know some people already donated some stuff and items over here in, in the uh, children's house. Yes. What I was going to say is I, I came yesterday and I put some stuff in some together. Uh -huh. Back there in the children's chapel. But you can just add whatever. Okay. Just go up these graciously given some, some items for uh, to help with the shoe boxes and uh, we thank we thank you for that. And put uh and she said you put some of your shoe boxes gonna fill them up or that night they be some of those things will be put in the boxes to be ready to go. Um, so if you need any more details, see Angel. I tried to look online this morning and I got uh, there's different age groups. If you, you got to decide from the boy or girl in the age group two to four, five to uh, nine, I believe it is, and then 10, 10 to 13, I believe, is the range. Uh, Sign to a boy or girl, and then you get items. And there's like 50 items. I wrote them down. You probably can't read my uh, handwriting. But if you'll ask me, uh, I'll tell you some of the items to get uh, uh, if you'd like to get those things. Or just go to the Dollar Tree or Dollar uh, General and get, get some things and uh, bring for the shoeboxes. Don't forget about December 2nd, December 5th. We're taking the uh, van out. Uh, we're going to be finding out about Carolyn, uh, Carol, Carolyn. So we got that coming up uh, uh, with us. So don't forget about that. Got a lot of uh, a lot of things coming up. A lot of things we're fixing to uh, be adding. So you can be involved or uh, and be, be be excited, be involved, or you can watch us be involved. Whichever you want to do, that's up to you. Uh, but we're gonna go on for the glory of God, moving forward. And uh, so, uh, anyways, that's some of the things we've got going on. Also, uh, the children's uh, title or uh, song track starts today for every service. It'll be every service. Uh, she'll be taking the kids out every service for practice for the children, except except for Tuesday. Tuesday night will be a Thanksgiving service for everybody being here. We, we uh, a special Thanksgiving service. It won't be a lengthy one, uh, so we'll have one uh, Thanksgiving service here Tuesday night. But uh, the, otherwise, the rest of the services, the children will be going out for for the practice for what they're going to do on the 20th uh, Sunday night, the 20th of December. So a lot of things taking place. A lot of things happening. Uh, a lot of things going on. I think today, today, uh, the children and grandchildren all when they're drawing names today. So if you haven't told Sheila uh, to put your child or grandchild's name in, please see her. Uh, let her know if there's a financial hardship. Please let her know, and it will be taken care of. No problems. We want every child to participate that wants to participate. We don't want to leave anybody out. No child left behind. In, in uh, at Norwood Church of God. So any child, anybody that wants to be involved, you can draw uh, you can draw names and different situations. Let she look. Tell her you've got a situation and we'll, we'll, we'll make things work. Not an issue. 
Praise the Lord. Grace announcement of all, Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Maybe not, he's coming for a church, he's coming for people, he's coming for those looking for him. Hallelujah. Have I missed any announcements? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This time I get Brother Eddie and uh, Bubba this morning. Take up my morning time of morning. CD. We didn't have CD. It's
God is so good. Mercy endures forever. Appreciate you being here. God is so wonderful. Hallelujah. So wonderful. Hallelujah. I want to help you this morning. God is sending me by to help you, to bless you, to witness to you. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26.
he was he was there. And, and if you look on scriptures prior to what I read to you this morning, if you look in the same chapter, you'll see where God told him, said, hey, I don't want you to go to Egypt because Egypt represents sin and all. We know that. But he told him he didn't want to go to Egypt, but for him to go to the land and stay in the land where he tells it, where he shows it. God spoke to Isaac and said, you need to, you don't go to Egypt, you go to this land. And so we understand he went to Gerard. He went there and he was with Abimelech and he was there and Abimelech uh, uh, was there. And we all know the story, how he called his wife, his sister and all these things. And we'll get down to the point to where I read it to you today that we got to understand God told him, I'm with you, you're not alone, you're not by yourself, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to help you, and I'm going to be there and multiply you, and I'm going to help you to be uh, successful, and let me tell you, <clears throat> that same year that God spoke to him, guess what, he was blessed a hundredfold, let me tell you today, God's still the same God today, yeah. in 2020 as he was back there talking to Isaac, he's telling us today, hallelujah, in this same year, in this same time, you can Just hold on to God. Amen. Just believe God. Isaac, it's a, it's a wonderful story. And I, it's a wonderful lesson that we can learn from this and a blessing that we can have in this. And I want you to see a couple things that, that we've got to realize about our life that Isaac had to realize about his. First of all, the first point I want you to see is we are blessed. Yes. He told Isaac, if you sojourn here, if you stay in this place, if you don't go to Egypt, but you'll listen to what I'm telling you and you'll stay here. You'll be blessed and you'll have everything that you need and you'll be very blessed. And so Isaac did what he was instructed by God and so he was he was blessed. But let me tell you, hallelujah, even the king of the land, even Abimelech said you're a blessed person. He began to recognize how blessed he was. He began to recognize what, what he had going for him, that he was on God's side, God was on his side because Abimelech in just a little bit we're going to see Abimelech said, hey, you need to get out of here because you're mightier than we are. You know what? That's how that's how the God that we serve will do you. Hallelujah. He'll bless you beyond comparison that people will say, how did you get so strong? How did you get there up so good? It's because the hand of the Lord is working in the midst of the people. And so Isaac, he had to understand first of all, he was blessed. We just sung that song. Thank you Lord for your blessing on me. And we'll get back to realizing that hey, we're a blessed people. But we got too many people in the church world that's throwing in the towel, that's giving in and giving up and saying, I'm going to quit. Let me tell you, that's not a time to quit. God is real today, church. God will continue to minister in your home and in your life. But you can't give up. If Isaac had given up, if Isaac had said, I'm going down to Egypt, it would have been a whole different story you're hearing this morning. But a whole different scenario you're hearing this morning. But Isaac said, you know what? You didn't fail my father, Abraham. And you're not going to fail me. Amen. You see, we got to get back to the old school roots, if you will. Got to get back to old school. Hallelujah. Amen. And understand, hallelujah, that what God says will happen. That what God does will continue to be done. That what God says don't do, we, we're not supposed to do, we don't do. And what God says do, that's what we need to do. We need to get back to a place to work. And we might have problems. Isaac had problems. We might have situations. Isaac had situations. We might have circumstances. Isaac had circumstances, but let me tell you, hallelujah, he took uh, took time, and he stayed where he was at, and he sojourned in the land that he was at, and God was pouring the blessings on him. While he was awake, God was a pouring. While he was staying, God was a pouring. Hallelujah, that's why sometimes we just got to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord working in people's lives, in people's homes, and around our neighborhoods and communities. We got to see God at work. Hallelujah. He works all the time. Right? We're so blessed. We're blessed with life. Hallelujah. We're blessed with a heartbeat. Hallelujah. We're blessed with a roof over our heads, Amen. shoes on our feet, yes. and food in our belly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Food in our belly. You see, we got to look at what we have instead of what we don't have. You know, that's the problem. Hallelujah. That's the problem. We get so caught up in numbers because you know everything's a number. When you go to the doctor, one of the first things they want to do is uh, uh, check your temperature. And check your weight. They want to see some numbers. And then they check your blood pressure and all those things. Everything we do is in numbers. You know, when you get your paycheck, you will see them large numbers. Hallelujah. When you, when you go to the store you and to buy something, you will see those minute or those little numbers. Amen. So everything works on numbers. And you know what? If we'll get to the if we get to the place in our life that we realize we're blessed, whether we've got a lot or we don't have a lot. We're blessed anyhow, hallelujah, because God yes. is right there with us. And, and, and you might not have a dime, uh, 
money in your pocket to get you to Friday payday. But let me tell you, God's bigger than a dime, and God will show up and show out in your life. You ain't got to worry about a thing if you hold on. But we got so many people giving in because the doctor says this and because this one says that, because the politician tells them a lie, what they want to hear, and says it's going to be all right. And so they be, begin to fall out away from God and say, I'm just going to trust man. Let me tell you, when you start trusting man, you're going to fall. Hallelujah, I'm like Bethel here. Hallelujah. We've got to see how blessed we are. Hallelujah. You know what? It's God that created this nation. Hallelujah. Everybody across the world, listen. It was God that created the United States of America. It was God that created freedom in our lives. It's God that it wasn't man. It wasn't some, it wasn't some agreement between this one and that one. But what it was was God's hand working in the midst of people. The people who can't quit worrying about uh, what somebody thinks or what somebody uh, uh, says about them. And like I said the other night preaching, hallelujah, if we get back to the place, what does God want us to do to let God be in control? Yeah. Things will turn around in this nation and in this world. This, this world might look like it's in a pickle, but let me tell you, I'm not in a pickle jar. I'm going to glory. Yeah. I'm in the church, hallelujah, and I'm on my way to heaven because I'm not giving in. I'm not throwing in the towel. Come hell or high water, I'm going to Jesus, hallelujah. I'm on his side. And so what he did, he sowed in his land. He sowed his seed. He put out his seed, and he was blessed a hundredfold. Yes. Hallelujah. You know what that means? That means 100% profit. That's right. 100% profit. hundredfold. That means like if you give somebody a dollar, and then they give you two dollars back. That's 100% profit, right? That's a hundredfold. But this hundredfold, I look at it a lot different than a dollar. Hallelujah. It don't say how much land he sowed in, but I can just imagine a field. Think of any field that you want to think of. Just a field planted in whatever crop you want to plant. And as soon as, soon as he uh, planted those seeds, you know, sometimes the birds, they want to take away some seeds. Sometimes somebody drives their vehicles through the fields and tears up the seeds, right? Sometimes the animals come and dig and do away with the seeds. But I'm thinking of a, a field that, that is planted and everywhere you look, God has just blessed and it's coming up. Hallelujah. And, and everything's coming up. And, and maybe, maybe, maybe it went farther down than what he had planted. Maybe the birds carried a little seed down to the side of the river. Like, I don't know. But what I can tell you, he was blessed a hundredfold. That means he had more than enough. He had more than he started with. And you know what? Any day, any day of the week, any night, uh, hour of the day, when you got more than you started with, you're doing something good. Let me tell you, you got more today than you started with yesterday. Hallelujah. God gave you 24 more hours, hallelujah, that you can wake up today and praise Him and honor Him. I'm telling you, we got to get back to thanking Him for what we got instead of worrying about what we don't have. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I wish the chairs and pews of every church that's God fearing Bible believing in America was filled to the brim today. Yes. But they're not. And not just because of COVID. That's right. People, people was caused by COVID, that, that's fine. But people have lost concern and desire for God. Yes, so yes. besides they take the COVID part out. Yes. Okay. I'm not talking about the COVID. I'm talking about before the COVID and people's minds, even without the COVID in their mind. People have lost a desire and determination to have God in their life. I'm talking about in the church world. I'm not talking about the center crowd. We know what they want. They want the world. I'm talking about the church crowd of this world have gotten to a place where they've given up. They said, well, you know, I, I don't know. I just don't get nothing out of that preacher. Uh, you know what? Uh, you might not get nothing out of the preacher, but you're getting something out of God because God's going to be in your heart. God, God's pricking your heart. Every time somebody that, that believes and preaches the word rightly divided, that word, it pricks a heart. The Holy Ghost is behind it, and it convicts hearts, and people are pushing God away and saying, well, I, I don't want to live like that. Well, I want to just do my own thing. And so what's happening is they're not being blessed a hundredfold. They're not being blessed like they could be because they're giving up and they're going to the top. And let me help somebody this morning. You know what? Whenever, whenever God does bless you a hundredfold, and whenever God blesses you 200 fold and 300 and 1,000 fold, if we let what he's blessed us with get in the place of our relationship with him, he can take it away. Amen. 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 
Hallelujah. Because a lot of people, when they get blessed, they let it take the place of their relationship with God. They have a relationship with whatever they're blessed with. And let me tell you, the one that gives can take away. Yes. Give us somebody's name. Hallelujah. God is so good. We got to get back to the place where we where we want to say, you know what? I I, I want to be I want to be blessed. I, I I like being blessed, and just continue to go forward. Not not worry about what we don't have, but thank Him for the good things, and thank Him for the blessings, thank Him for what we got. Because we all we've got we got each other here today, don't we? Hallelujah. We've got God by our side. We've got our families. We've got our friends. We've got our uh, everybody in here's got a vehicle of some sort outside. You got vehicles to drive to drive home in. You don't have to walk, or if you have to walk, somebody will give you a ride. So we we got it all, and people still want more, more, more. Let me tell you, God blessed us more than we could ever imagine, and we got to get back to the place of realizing how blessed we are. And because you know what, when we realize how blessed we are, we'll do something about it. We'll let people see Jesus in our life instead of covering him up like a candle, uh, covered up. And, well, well, I ain't going to show you this. When, when we get, when we, when we have those blessings and thankful for what we've got, we want to show people. Amen. We want people to see Jesus. We want people to see the Lord in our lives. We want people to see God working in our lives, in our hearts. We want people to see what's going on in us. We want people to see <laughs> what's taking place in our lives. We want people to understand that it's God that did it. It's not somebody else. Yes, Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, somebody might give you a piece of money. It might give you uh, some type of physical possession. But it was God that gave that to them to start with. Amen. So it's God. Yes, you thank them for giving whatever they give to you. But I'm talking about in the beginning. It was God. God did it all. And you know what? God's done it all in my life since the very beginning. When I was in my, my mama's belly, God was doing something. When I was out in the world, I, hallelujah, thought I knew it all was a, was a hard-headed teenager. Thought I knew everything and thought I knew more than mama and daddy. Guess what? God was still there watching me and had his hand on me. I wasn't serving and wasn't living right, but God had his hand on me. Hallelujah, the whole time. And let me tell you, I'm here today because God has his hand on me. Because God has his anointing in my life and his blessing. You know what? That's why I know that I can thank him. Hallelujah. If he never blesses me with another thing, if he takes everything I got away, I'm still a blessed man Amen. in this world. Still blessed. Amen. Isaac understood that he was blessed. So, a bit more like, hallelujah. I'm getting excited. I've been on the Lord for it. Boy, we're here at 2 o'clock. Hallelujah. Bless Praise the Lord. He might bring her uh, sleeping bags and her, <laughs> her camping gear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Abimelech, he comes up to Isaac and says, hey, you've got to get out of here. Oh, we, can't, we can't have this. You're mightier than we are going out. Well, see, years ago, the wells, the water wells that had been dug by Abraham's servants, the Philistines had, had filled them in with dirt. The enemy had just covered them up. The enemy had just push stuff in there, the crime and things of the world, and push that in there and stop them up. But Isaac, as he goes on that town, he leaves up in that. He goes, and where does he go? He ends up in a valley, a place that most people would say, well, this ain't a good place, but what did he do? He pitched his tent. Because, you see, most people don't like the valley. They like the mountain. That's right. Most people don't like being down in the low. They like being up high. He gets to the valley, and he pitches his tent, and lo and behold, they dig a well, and it comes up springing water. Now, that's just amazing. They took out what had been stuffed and put in there, and they dug it out, and springing water come up. But lo and behold, lo and behold, the herdsmen of Gerard, they come up, and they want to fuss and argue. That's our water. That's our land. You can't have that. So Isaac says, okay. And he begins to take his men and go to another place. Oh, I like this. And they go to another place, and they dig another well. Lo and behold, God begins to give them water out of this well. Lo and behold, they're there. Well, uh, the, the herdsmen came. Well, that's ours too. They, they, they just want it all. They wanted everything. They wanted everything to be there. So I said, okay, we're not going to fuss with you. We're not going to fight with you. We're not arguing with you. You can have this well. We're going to go dig us another one. Hallelujah. That's how That's how uh, Isaac trusted God. He knew if he dug one well and water came, a second well and water came, he knew he could dig a third and so on and water would come because God was reaching out and blessing his life because he was following after what God wanted him to do. Hallelujah. And then we look at this and and we see, we see where he said, he removed from them. So this is the second time. Verse 22, after the second time, we dug the well, the herdsmen began to strive, being fuss, fight, few. He removed from this and digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of Rehoboth, and he said, For now the Lord 
and it made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. I want you to understand. Sometimes you got to dig. Sometimes you got to dig because the only way to dig, the only way to get what you need is sometimes you got to you got to dig in and you got to put your feet in and you got to start moving out the things of the world and that's that's what he had to do. The earth, the things that the, the dirt that and that the uh, Philistines had put in there, they had stopped up the well. Sometimes you got to dig those old wells back up because you see yeah. those old wells they worked for Abraham. They was good for Abraham and his flock. Hallelujah! They was good for Abraham and his family. And Isaac understood this. Hallelujah! In my look. It might have looked old. It might have looked like, hey, there's no use. They're all stopped up. But what he said was we're going to get that trash that the Philistines put in here, the enemy of God, and we're going to come forth and we're going to dig, and we're going to dig, and God's going to prove to us and going to show us, hallelujah, what can happen. And what happened? Water did come to come out of that. He called it rare. Well, you know why? Because they was able to have this water. But not only that, because the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. He said, you know what? We ain't got to fuss or strive anymore. Everybody can live peacefully out here. Everybody can do what they need to do. Everybody can just get along out here. Don't have to worry about a thing. Eh? Don't have to worry about anything going on around. Don't have to worry about anything taking place around. All right, this hombre thing's getting on my nerves. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we don't have to... We don't have, he, 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 he didn't worry about what, what was in there, what was of old, what he understood was they used to work, and God's in control of this, and we're going to make it so they started digging. And I should have brought a shovel today, kind of, kind of showed you how to, hey, but, you know, but I believe they begin to dig. I don't know if they dig with shovels. I don't know if they use rocks or pieces of rock. I don't know if they use their hands, but what I can tell you is they dig and they dig and they dig until something changed about that matter. About that situation, water began to spring forth. Water began to come up, and he understood, hey, this is a place where we can all dwell together. This is a place where things can work out. This is a place where we can begin. Let me tell you, if we'll get back to the place of digging up those old things, you see the enemy, he might have covered up your joy that you used to have with the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. The enemy might have covered up your faith in, in God because things have been going so bad and so sour lately that you just don't know which way to turn. The enemy might have come in and might have crippled you up. The enemy might have come in and told you all kinds of lies. The enemy might have come in and done all kinds of things in your family or in your household or on your job. The enemy might have come in and covered everything that was once wide open for the glory of God that might have covered it up. But let me tell you, if you get back to digging where you knew God was in the midst, where you knew that God began to reach out, where you knew that God began to help you, where you knew that God gave you the joy to start with, where you knew that God gave you the hope to start with, where God gave you the peace to start with, where God gave you help to start with, where God back to the place and you'll begin to dig those wells again. They'll spring forth rivers of living water and out of your bellies will flow. Hallelujah. Living water. Amen. Hallelujah. Living water. Hallelujah. Sometimes you gotta dig. You can't just say, well, it used to be like that. No. Quit worrying about it used to be and start digging again, church. Amen. Start digging. What used to be can be again. Because God's still God. God's not dead. He's not on vacation. God's still God. And He always will be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You gotta dig. You gotta dig. You know the enemy, he wants to come in. And he wants to take your supply away. He wants to take everything away. But if you dig again, the supply will come up. Whatever you're in need of will come up. You dig that dirt out. You dig the trash out the enemy put in there. You dig all the things of the world out that the enemy has allowed to cave in and to close up. That opening that you once had where water came out. That living water that used to be running through your veins. It used to come out and used to tell everybody about Jesus. But here lately you've been zipped up and not telling nothing about Jesus. Hallelujah. Those, those living waters that have been pushed down and pressed down. And that the enemy has tried to cover up. Let me tell you, dig that open again. Let it burst open. Hallelujah. And the power of God work in your life and shine forth. So other people can experience Amen. what you experience. Hallelujah. Open the well. Hallelujah. To what God, God desires you to have. Hallelujah. 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 You see, in that well that he went to, oh, let me, don't, don't, don't forget this. But then he goes. Hallelujah. Then he goes and he, after this happens, so, uh, after, he, after he has this and he says, uh, and those are going to be fruitful, multiplying, ring of all. Then he goes to Beersheba. 
And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he builded an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord, pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants digged a well. He built an altar and, built and dug another well. You know what? At the place where the altar had been disposed of or where it was not, there was now an altar and there was a well that had been dug, had been dug up because all the cover was done away. The enemy had to go. Because you see, when you've got an altar and you offer a sacrifice of praise to God, the enemy's got to go. So everything he's put in your in your in your well, everything that he's covered in your life, everything that he's tried to do, hallelujah. If you, if we'll get back to the altar place, and we'll get back to the place where we say, you know what? We're going to pitch our tent here and we're going to say, you know what, God, we're serving you. Hallelujah. We show the devil that he, he don't know who he's dealing with. He don't know that he's dealing with a monster. Hallelujah. That we're going to reach out and we're going to claim the victory in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to be what, uh, what we need to be for the glory of God. And God will let the water spring up. Hallelujah. Around our altar of sacrifice that God uh, begins to show, begins to move. You see, so we got we can't worry about it. Think about it. Those old caved in, crusty covered, dilapidated uh, 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 wells. We've got to move all the blockage. Move all the all the things that are covering it so that it can't be of use. Move all the things that are uh, that are blocking that well from springing out. We've got to move it, move it, move it, dig it, dig it, dig it, get it out of the way so the water will gush out. And before long, people see that life, that life that we've got. Hallelujah. You know how you've heard that saying, life of the party. Now, I remember when I was out in the world, I was a jokester. I'd act crazier than I act now, probably. But I act crazy in a different manner for the Lord. But anyway, that was crazy. And they, they would say, you know, sometimes I'm not bragging, they'd say, life of the party, and, 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 and I'd cut up and act foolish. But you know what? I didn't know what life of the party was until Jesus came in. Amen. Jesus is the life of the party. Jesus is the life. Amen. Hallelujah. The way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. When we have Jesus, we can have life. When we have Jesus, those wells can be dug out again. Those problems can be done away with. And we'll let that river of little water flow freely. Thirdly, by you digging out, others are blessed. Others are blessed. Blessed. If you look on down the scripture from where I read, where I started, verse 25, read on down. A bit of that hears about and sees all the blessings of Isaac. He sees how God's blessed him, how God's multiplying, how God's moving, how God's allowing wells that used to be covered up with the world to be opened up and water's coming out and, and uh, livestock and the people are being watered and they, everybody's got water and everything's going good. He sees that. And he comes up, he said, Remember that comes to Isaac and says, Hey, Isaac said, What are you doing here? You hate me. You run us out. He said, Isaac, he said, You're so mighty. I just want to come have, basically, I want to come have a treaty with you. We, we didn't hurt you or do anything to harm you. Can you please return the favor and not harm us? And so they had a treaty. And lo and behold, there was a feast that took place. They ate and drank together. And they, and they had this treaty because he dug those wells. They could see the wells of water springing up. They could see that everybody was going to flourish. They could see the multiplication that God was allowing in the land. And so, and so Abimelech said, you know what? We don't want to be on the bad side of this guy. And so they come down to Isaac, that guy came down to him and said, you know what? We want to have a treaty. And they, they was able to eat and be blessed because, because Isaac dug those old wells. Those what used to be dug them up. The what used to happen, dug them up. Said, you know what? We're going to bring new life to this. We're going to bring new life. Hallelujah. That's exactly what happened. Let me tell you, if we're, we're worrying about, if we'll let the dead bury the dead, spiritually speaking, and we'll get back to worrying about life, you know what? Things will be uncovered again. Things will work out for God again. Things will work out. Hallelujah. God will begin to move. But you know what? We're down in the mother groves too much. We, around the church world of America, we need to get back to saying, Hallelujah. God's going to make it work. God's going to bring life back into the I'm just like many other people. I don't like how some of the things turned out in our elections this year. That's right. But I know God's still in control. Yes. So I'm not worried about those old wells anymore. 
I'm going to make a new wells because God's going to put his power as an order. And we're going to be able to do with what seemed to be old. We're going to be able to do new things because God's going to bless his church through anything that happens, anything that transpires. God's going to bless his people. Hallelujah. He's going to bless and multiply. He's going to bless us a hundredfold, a thousandfold. It will just make sure that water is springing. Make sure that life is springing up out of those wells. Make sure life is constantly coming up so others around know and experience the love of Jesus. Amen. Know and experience the love of Jesus. So, I tender to you this morning. If there's anyone watching or anyone not, or anyone that's here, lost and undone, until you get things right with the Lord, you'll not be able to dig up those old wells. You'll not be able to make have rivers of living water until you make it right with the Lord. But all of the ones that's serving God, that love God, those things that maybe the enemies come in and try to try to coax you or to whisper in your ear. Those things of, like joy and faith and happiness and peace and comfort that he's trying to cover up. Those uh, those things that he's tried to uh, tried to dispel out of your life and that he's done a pretty good job of covering them up because now where you used to be smiling and happy, now you're frowning and unhappy. He's done a pretty decent job of covering that up, trying to get your testimony, trying to get you to quit talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and so he's come in, you know, if you get back to, to digging up those old wells and say, you know what? I used to have peace about my body, about my life. I used to spiritually and physically. I used to have comfort. I used to have hope and joy and love and all those things. I'm going to start digging one more time. God, will you help me to dig that back out? God, will you help that living water to come back out? God, will you help me one more time? One more time. Sister Nancy, would you come, please? One more time. One more time would you help me to dig those old wells again? You see, the enemy thinks he's done something good. He's tried to bury in the life flow of yours and my life. He tries to bury in our life flow because we, we hear what the media says, we hear what the news says, and we hear what the naysayers say. And so before long, if we told the same foolishness time and time and time again, we'll begin to believe the same foolishness time and time and time again. And so we'll, we'll begin to uh, be okay and settle in with the enemy covering up those wells of life, those wells of water. But it's time that God's people say, you know what? I don't want my living water covered. I want it to flow. Amen. Because when that, as long as that river is flowing, there's life. When the river stops up, when the life stops up, there's death that's going to come. But when that river is flowing, when life is flowing, just like in a physical river, when that river stops up, when it gets dammed up, before long, if there's a lot of fish, they'll start dying because there's not enough room, not enough food and stuff for them. But if you bust that dam that's over a, 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 a river or something, bust that, the water begins to gush, begins to flow freely. You see, that's what Jesus wants to do today. He wants what's been clogging up our wheels to be unclogged. Hallelujah. We don't need Mr. Drano. We need Jesus. Amen. We need those clogs to, to be delivered. Those clogs to come out. We need those wheels to quit being clogged up. We need those wells to start flowing freely one more time. One more time, flowing freely for the glory of God. One more time, get back to digging what God's got in store for us. You see, this, this, this road of a Christian and serving God is not all just fun and games. Sometimes we've got to work a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Anything worth having is worth working for. And Jesus is well worth having. So I'm willing to work. I'm willing to dig. I'm willing to dig. But the choice is yours. You don't have to. You don't have to dig. You can allow those wells to stay stopped up. If you like being unhappy. If you like being without joy, without peace and comfort. If you like just moping around, that's fine. That's between you and God. But I'm going to tell you, as for David or Shankle in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And we're not going to we're not going to be down in the mullet rooms all the time. We're going to have some joy about us. You know why? Because God is over my life. Jesus is Lord of my life. Jesus is real today. And Jesus will help you. So no matter what might have been going on, or whatever you're worried about today, just, just understand that you're blessed. 
you can dig again those old wells and let life spring up. And because you dig, other people can be blessed as well. It's up to you. It's up to each and everyone watching, viewing, everyone here. It's up to you. If everyone to stand with me. Reverence to the Lord, every head bowed, every eye closed. Every eye closed, reverence to the Lord. I ask you this morning. If you'd say, preacher, my wells of living water have been clogged up by the enemy. I want to dig them out and let the life of the life, free life of God to flow through them. But once again, I want you to pray for me that God will, will help that to happen. Would you slip your hand up and write back down and say, preacher, pray for me. Just pray for me. I won't call you. I don't want to embarrass you. I promise. Just acknowledge to the Lord that you need help. Acknowledge to the Lord that you need to have those wheels cleaned out so that life can flow. Acknowledge to the Lord that you need His help. Maybe there's some that's watching or some that's here. Or whatever the case is, Jesus is not Lord of your life. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry for every sin, everything that I've done wrong. Please forgive me. Please cleanse my heart. Change my soul and make me whole. And Jesus will come on the inside and love you. And he'll cleanse you. And he'll give you that river of living waters freely in your life. It's up to you. It's up to you. So we pray in just a moment. Maybe you raised your hand. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you should have. Or maybe you're watching and couldn't raise your hand here. But we pray. If that's you and you don't know Jesus, ask him into your life. If you're here and you are on watching and you say, I need to dig those old wells again. I need to have what I used to have. I need to have that joy unspeakable and full of glory in my life. I need to be different than I am now. Pray that, that God will help you to clean and dig out those old wells again and you'll be new. Everything will become new. Heavenly Father, we're coming for you this day, loving and praising you. Thank you for allowing us to be in your house. Thank you for this message. Lord, it's instilled in my heart. Lord, it's instilled in my, my mind. It's blessed my heart this morning, Lord. I thank you for this message. Lord, it's encouraged me. If it's not encouraged anybody else, it's encouraged me. But Lord, I know that you've never sent a message out or uh, scripture out in the void. Somebody here or somebody watching. They may be lost and undone and don't know you as a personal savior. Lord, I urge you, please break my heart. Help them to make things right before it's too late. Help them to ask you for forgiveness and, and to come into their life. And Lord, please do that. If they, if they ask you for forgiveness, please come into their life. Change their life. Save them, Lord. Lord, reach down and change them. Lord, all the ones here that are saved and a Christian, Lord, those that have been have kind of been down in the dumps lately or maybe been, been uh, maybe allowed the enemy to cover up their, their living water that's springing forward. Maybe their, their living water that's coming uh, that's coming up uh, in their life, Lord, that's been covered over by the enemy. Lord, I just ask you to move in a mighty way, touch in their life, help them to get to digging again, get back to digging in their life, that they can allow those living waters to flow. Let, let those wells spring forth, bust open one more time, God, and let living waters flow through them. God, I ask you to move in a mighty way. I ask you to touch every life, every heart, every home. Lord, I ask you to do it today. Lord, reach down and help our wells to be springing full. Help our wells to be running over. Help us to have that faith, hope, and love, and joy. Lord, help us to always be able to have that river of living water, our billions of living water flowing so other people can see that and other people can be blessed. God, we are a blessed people, a blessed nation. Lord, I ask you to use us for your service. Use us for your namesake. Touch all those who are here for whatever reason. Touch all those who are sick. Lord, reach down and anoint. Bless everybody. Keep them safe while they're traveling. Lord, do a mighty word. Bless each and every life, every soul. We love you today. Give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming today. Don't forget, don't forget Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. God bless you. You're liberty to go.